the context of this is like all these different pizza places from what tri-state area. Yeah, yeah. For the places most part, where you've done your one bite review, yeah, which is right. huge. And so I know the, most of the pizzerias. I've met them. I'm friends with them. I've scored them. I've helped a lot of them. So I, these a, are the superstars. Yeah, yeah. fairly close knit. They're going to come and they're going to go to this stadium yep. and they're going to recreate the kitchens. It was, was the thing. It, the it best was, of the best pizza you can have. So they're all that. This is a big thing to put together. This is not. Hey, we're going to throw some pizzas in boxes and then deliver them to a park and then everybody grabs a slice. This is the fucking. You real looked thing. at it and it looked like mini storefronts. Basically, we let them pick their. Ovens. We went out and so there were all sorts of different types of ovens. It was a big production to put together. Um, and then probably like a week, week and a half, it started this dude, Kenji Alt Lopez, who I'd never heard of, mm. celebrity chef, okay. um, like a million fall, million on his YouTube channel, um, 600 Instagram. And he started publicly tagging the pizza places and being like, how the fuck can you support Dave Portnoy and all the hit pieces that have been written, quoting them, including like, I'm a union buster, all this stuff, uh, and just going crazy. He was also friends with the Washington Post, so. Where's his animosity for you coming from? This is a crazy political human, so I didn't realize. So his identity is politics. Which is, I didn't realize. Yeah. He, he actually, during COVID, he had to take this down and apologize, and it's always the same. He basically said, if you support Trump, it's no different than being a Nazi or wearing a white hood, like in the KKK. If you come to my restaurant, he won't serve you. Yeah. So that that's the vibe, yeah. and I have clearly been perceived as, well, David interviewed Trump, all that shit. So that was where it was coming from mm. in every hit piece. So he was going crazy, posting it, posting, tagging, shaming the pizza places and, and sponsors. And he's getting rewarded from his followers and he gets a feeling like a and he, hero. And he blocks he's, everybody. He, he doesn't allow comments. It's an echo chamber of just his world. Yes. Um, and the, there's two authors of the Washington Post article, Emily Heal. And then Tom Karma Man and or guess something? Who, guess who he's a super fan of? Kenji Alt Lopez. Oh, well, well, well. What a shock. Like yeah. he, he had, this guy, the other author, had one picture on his Instagram that wasn't himself. It was Kenji. That's the only one. <laughs> so shocking how that works. Um, and what was this? On Thursday before the festival or maybe Wednesday, I forget. Okay. But we get an email from a sponsor sent to me being like, heads up. The Washington Post is writing an article about the festival and they basically sent an email, hey, we want to talk to you about supporting the Pizza Fest and being involved with Dave, who is a racist. Here comes the word I can't pronounce. Yeah. Mashazanist. <laughs> <laughs> I can't made it pronounce Hebrew. it. Hold on. I cannot pronounce it. Bro, I'll bro, never bro, be able to pronounce it. The fact, the fact that she didn't correct Solomon. you one time. Made her quite likable. So, so, she could have. She could have. Somebody been. who is as unfamiliar with that term <laughs> would never be able to pronounce it. Misogynist. Misogynist. Yeah. Misogynist. Um, and, and You're losing it already. And basically <laughs> sent the email to the advertiser, I was being like, "Please defend yourself." Putting them in a box. Yeah, it was like, crazy. What it, the it, fuck it, is a sponsor yeah. supposed to say to? How that? could you support a pizza fest? That is run by a misogynist. Yeah, right. And a racist. But they're also sending it to a bunch of old school Italians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What do they think they're going to say? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Finally, <laughs> finally, our pizza. Fest. This was this was a major like blue chip sponsor, the one that spent. So these it are the us. sponsors, not the actual uh, kids. Yes, yeah. but they did it to everybody. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I and she put her number to call back on. So that was sent to me. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna call this woman and see what the deal is. Bro, um, watching her melt. So I called her and the call went as bad really for her as it possibly could because right off the bat, I'm like, why are you sending this email saying I'm the M word and because I can't pronounce it <laughs> and racist? And she's like, I didn't do that. Like, I haven't done that. Yeah. Like, well, let me read you the email. Hmm. I read her the email. She's like, oh, I just did that once. I'm like, that's weird. You just said you didn't do it. And I just read it to you. And then the con conversation continued. I'm like, do you know anything about me? She's like, no. I'm like, well, then how could you send this email if you don't know anything about me? She's like, well, we're going to talk to you later, which they weren't. Um, and continued on. She's and like, then oh. the journalistic yeah. tactic. Right. That she, was. She, she said, we only send something negative to try to get people to engage. It's a journalistic tactic. I'm like, well, that's fucking so, bullshit. So it's, it's almost as if she's admitting that her form of journalism is to manipulate the person she's interviewing 
to satisfy the angle of the article. Totally. Which is no integrity in the journalism. Mm -hmm. It's I'm gonna prompt you so that you react to this prompt so I can take that one sound bite and be like, yes, we are aware that he does this stuff and we really questioned it, but maybe for the greater good, we thought it was okay. So now she's confirming who it is. But on the phone, I couldn't believe she said it. Me neither. She was just like, oh yeah, we fake stories. Yeah. That's that's the kind of way that I interpret it. Clickbait is most journalism. Bro, hundred percent. I wonder if they have to compete with YouTube now. I wonder if journalists are like the only way that they can get people to watch their video reports or their even read their essays is that if they compete with the clickbait of YouTube. It's all clickbait. And, And then she also did something which there's been. Almost my biggest complaint. There's so many hit pieces. They're all the same shit. They, the hit piece reads the other hit piece and prints it as though it is fact. Yeah. And how would anybody actually know if it's true or not? Because they haven't done the research to dig into. It's like I've offered to everybody. Sit down. I'm an open book. Put a camera. I will yeah. go through every point. And an open mind at the end is going to be like, this is garbage. How has this ever been printed about him? Yeah. But she said, I'll sit down with you at 10 a.m. Then she picked the time. She's like, 10 a.m. I agreed to it knowing the piece was already written. And then they canceled that. And they're like, we want to move it to 5 p.m. Well, the article has to come out in like five minutes. So, so why is, would I agree to that? Yeah, I didn't understand the angle right there, but I guess it's, they wanted the call with you after the article would already be printed. Yes, so and you were trying to beat the article yes. so that you could at least get a fair shake. And, and, and by the way, journalists, that's the thing. They don't want the fair shake because it puts yeah. them at risk. If you're printing something, you can always plead ignorance. Neg- I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. You can't say that if you've spoken with me and I've basically given you facts and proof and evidence that contradicts what you're writing. Okay. So that's why they don't want the, the subject.